Well, a very, very good day to you, folks. Uh, and uh, yet another Monday, <laughs> yet another artwork. Something different again this week. Well, I've kind of been there before, but uh, for for a couple of for a couple of pieces, but uh, in terms of the style. So, um, so this week we are we are doing an. Um, an aerial landscape once more and this time we're doing a uh, a place in Cape Town once again we've done the Boer Carp um, twice in Cape Town and and uh, this week we're doing a place called Kayalicha which is a, uh, a, a township in uh, on the um, on the Cape Flats, and that has grown substantially over the years, and I'm doing I'm I'm depicting a section of it, uh, but looking out over False Bay, however, towards the Hot and Hot Holland Mountains in the in in the distance. So, without further ado, let us do. Be do be do. All right, let's get going with a little tiny piece of charcoal so that I can do a horizon line of sorts. Where should I put the horizon line? Uh, always when there's a large body of water, we need a horizon line. Why is this all floppy? Let me just sort this out first. Just to get that all correct and nice and smooth. Okay, I don't know why that was looking like that, but anyway, sorted it out. Uh, right, let's see, where should I put this thing? Da -da 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 -da. Let's go about, let's go to the bottom. Right, so I have to do the upside down thing once again because the horizon line doesn't stretch all the way across. Let's put it there. No, wait, let's just get it straight, straight, straight. Right. Oh, for goodness sake. Ay. <laughs> ay, 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 guy. Come on now. Hello, Kit Kat. Hello. Where have you been? He wasn't here earlier on when I got up to give him his biscuits, but hello. Good morning. I'm just busy right now. Just give me a little moment. Oh. Sorry, I'm being... Oh, right, that will have to do. That will have to do. Hello, boy. Hello. You want to come say hello to the people? Hey, you come say hello? Here we go. Yes, the Kit Kat's been out, out and about. It's not even four o'clock. <laughs> right. Off you go then, you've got your biscuits there, they're waiting for you. Let's just do this a little bit better then. Use my other ruler just to just to put in the extra part, a little bit extra as a guide, a rough guide. Hey, where have you been? 
Hmm? Right. Okay, that that uh, the tractor that you can hear is Kit Who's happy to be home, hey? So all around this this area, and I, uh, and I mentioned False Bay um because we're we're uh now i have to get my bearings um we're at the so false bay does that so we're at the kind of eastern to to to, to east south eastern side of end of false bay no west northwestern side oh goodness gracious me Anyway, we're looking across False Bay in an east northeasterly direction. Right, there we've got it. It's so confusing always with all the with all the the, the different bays and part of Cape Town's on this side and that side and some of it's on the Atlantic side and some of it's on the uh, the Indian Ocean side and uh, uh, goodness gracious me. Um, Anywho, um, this is over the back side of the, of, of the, in other words, the Table Mountain would be facing in the opposite direction behind us. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> right over here then, we have a, uh, we have some sand, sand dunes because we're right near the, we're right near the water. And, um, excuse me, Kit Kat, can you move along a bit, please? Thank you. And, uh, the result, oh, God, that, um, there are these, a lot of sand dunes in this, and that's just a sliver of, of the bay that we can see over here. Right. And then, and then, and then, let me just depict this a little bit, a little bit heavier. So this is a kind of a brush covered sand dune, in other words, Feinbos and so on, very kind of raggedy and rough looking and then in the far distance so about 20 kilometers away I'll, I'll get this going a little bit better for just shortly uh, I'll get some recognizable stuff going in a moment. These are the Hottentots Holland Mountains, mountain range, and those are in the far distance. It's just, uh, let's just give that a little bit of, did you have something to eat, Kit Kit? Ah. 
So these mountains are going to be kind of quite hazy in, in, in a way. Uh, so I just wanted to depict them. they'll be kind of purpley blue in the distance and so we're looking out over over false bay um you'll have sort of gordon's bay will be this end and then stretching right across down to uh um, Ray Else and Pringle Bay right at the end with uh, the um, with Hunklip, which is called Hunklip, is that is that little uh, peak at the end there. Um, some some thirty five kilometres in the distance, thereabouts, from where from from our viewpoint over here, and then. Slightly more in the foreground, so a little bit more, a little bit um, more discernible is also part of this mountain range, but just a uh, another fold that's closer, closer in, slightly closer in, 15 kilometers closer, so in other words, about 20 kilometers away, is this, uh, is this kind of almost flat ridge but it 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 it's the home to Steenbrust Dam or dams it's uh, uh there's there's Steenbrust Dam and then there's Boer Steenbrust Dam above Steenbrust Dam um and that is the those are the water those are the Cape Town's pr primary water reservoirs So this is only 20 kilometers away. Not that far considering, all things considered. Nevertheless, there they look. I'll, I'll work with the contrast of that a little bit later on today. And we're back to our really want to try and capture I was re really enjoying the softness of the of last week's of last week's piece goodness have I already forgotten what I did oh the <laughs> goodness gracious me um, 
the tidal pool. Um, and I don't know if you could even quite discern how the subtlety of it um, from the video image or even the, the final image that I photograph of it that I posted up. Um, but I really was enjoying the yeah the subtlety of mood and so on and I want to try and emulate some of that in this piece um, yeah I think it was it was it was primarily because I had um, established the charcoal drawing much more so than I had in previous pieces and that was what that was what did it, I believe. Anyway, um, right, let's just establish the. It's a false bay. It's called false bay because at the end of false bay, there's called uh, there's a place called Cape Point which was originally thought to be the lowest latitude of Africa, the point of the lowest Af attitude, uh, latitude of Africa, um, which it wasn't, because it does a, it does a, it does a funny hook thing here. Um, Cape Town is over here, it does a hook, and they, let me actually, I can draw it for here because I'm going to be drawing over this. So um, we've got Cape Town itself goes around like this and on with uh, this is this is this is essentially the city of Cape Town in this area. I don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing here. We all have Robin Island somewhere out here and so on. Or is it? No. I, whatever. Um, and then We've got this long thing going on here, which is Cape Point. And then we've got this, this great big uh, false bay. Okay, but false bay happens to go like that. So it ends up actually lower down over the end there, past Pringle Bay and what have you, beyond, beyond, Hermanus and all that. Um, down there is the, is actually the, the the lowest point in Africa, um, the lowest latitude in Africa. So I don't know if you could see that. What I've just done, but there it is, and there it's there it's not. See, that's why we use an eraser. <laughs> It's the one of the very, very, very few times that I actually use it to, to, to rub out with. Okay, let's continue. And the start of this, I mean, we, 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 we're, we're looking at, at this at a very low angle and the start of the shoreline on this side is less than two kilometers away. Right down here, lots and lots of, it's very, very sandy. All the streets of, of Kailicha are mostly sandy. The, the, uh, the dunes are always shifting. The whole area is plagued with these, with, by these dunes that they try and keep back you know, and, 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 uh, and keep, um, uh, goodness, I'm not even talking. You see, I can't concentrate and talk at the same time, guy.
So, so this side of things is essentially, I, I think it's the Indian Ocean, hey? Oh, is it? <laughs> it's always so damn confusing for me. Anyway, um, as far as I know, Cape Point is uh, the other side. The, the other side of Cape Point is the Indian Ocean, at least the Atlantic, and this side is the is the Indian Ocean. Then heads all the way up up to up to Durban and beyond to infinity. So, uh, did I finish what I was saying when I lost track? I think I did. So yes, from this point here, it's about 18 kilometers directly across False Bay towards the, uh, towards the other side. Okay, anyway. Okay, what's next? Let's do a, hmm. So what we have here is a kind of a confluence of rough street. Now this, this part of Kailicha, now we must, we must understand that Kailicha is a township and it's a township that was formed um, in 1985. I'm going to have to use this long. The hood air. I know I shan't use that one then. I'll just use my plastic ruler. Let's just do it that, that way. Just to get a rough line of sorts going on here. Particularly good. So um yeah, so Kailicha was formed in 1985, and it was formed, well, it had started, they'd started building it in 1984 or so, thereabouts, and, and uh, so it was, it, the, the first section, I think it was called C, C section or something like this, uh, not Caesarean, um, was formed in, a, in or, or was completed in about, 1985 and 1984 and 1985 they already had 30,000 people in that particular section of Kailicha. I think that I think that the this was in the in the bad old days of of apartheid and group areas act and all that kind of rubbish and la 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 and um, they found that they that there were certain certain areas that were um that there was a great deal of sort of unrest and what have you so they decided to create this township um to and 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 basically forcibly remove people from other areas and bring them here maybe uh, and this being on the cape flats is a large expansive area that that was thinking about it now kind of wasteland <laughs> shifting sands and and what have you nice one hey um and so they they established this this township um on the Cape Flats and yeah within a year they had already they had already brought in and, and established in low cost housing of course um, around about 30,000 people um, 
anyway so it it then it then started to grow over the over the years as they brought more people in until of course 1994 came along um and uh the the uh Today, uh, you know, so obviously 1994 came along and, and then the Group Areas Act was abolished and all that sort of stuff took place. Um, I think that the Group Areas Act had been abolished before, but prior to this, but to 94. But nevertheless, people, more and more people started to encroach over the, over the years, of course, not, um, you know, so that we had quite a large shift in, so the Group Areas Act essentially or part of it prevented people from <coughs> from just migrating in from other areas of the of the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, etc., from the uh, other homelands, <coughs> such as the Trans Sky East in the Eastern Cape now, um, and so on. So they they didn't that they, they were trying to curtail the influx of people. <laughs> and so that that's why they established these these places and that's why they had the the the, the past laws and all that sort of thing so that the people could you know, there was no freedom of movement as such everything was controlled and regulated and blah 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 but whatever but after 94 of course and the the, the one or two years leading up to 94 um more and more people started to flood in because jobs and all that became available and so on. So, uh, yeah, they just pulled in in, in their thousands. Um, and, and, and I guess they've tried over the years to keep up with, with the, uh, with the um, demand for I won't say demand, but the need for proper housing, you know, properly properly established brick and mortar type places, which is what they originally are, and certainly large areas of Kailicha are indeed constructed such. Um, however, there are now vast sections as well which are informal settlement and that have spread spread out. Um, um such that um Kailicha now covers something like 44 square kilometers of uh of land on the on the cape flats <clears throat> and um whereas in in 1985 there were 30,000 people here now we're talking in the region of 2.4 million people um just in this township in fact it's one of the five largest slums in the world put that in your pipe um, anyway here we have a, a, a there's an intersection of roads over here now I'm gonna be building on that as we go this is kind of gonna be just lots and lots and lots of little shapes that I'm going to be working with here because of all this is I've chosen a particular spot uh, area corner of of Kailicha. in fact it's it's the what was I saying it was the it's the uh, it's the east southeastern corner perhaps of Kailicha. Um and where they've, it's probably not great ground for them to, to have built their shacks and what have you on, but hey, they did. Um, and hence the, the sandy streets and the, uh, not the best places to, to, to start building on, but nevertheless, they did. And so we have these, and I've got, and I've chosen an aerial perspective because, uh, I quite enjoyed it before. It worked quite well. It was different rather than a, a street view. So we're looking sort of more or less down onto them at about a 30 degree angle. Um, and 
and I've used Google Earth for that. Thank you. Um, thank you, Google Earth, for allowing. But, 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 but Google Earth, because I don't have the professional version, of course, is uh, it's not very distinct, which is exactly what I want. I don't want something that is too distinct and precise because I've only got a week and five days to complete this piece and I don't and I also don't want to go for this precision detail and so on. So I'm just literally I'm literally just building in in fact let me just kind of put some I want to do Again, we've got this this perspective thing going on where we have remember I said to you the last time so as we at, when we look in that direction that the lines run away from us and at, as we reach as we reach our point of central vision and I'm staring straight up in between one of some of the huts so the lines are upright and then as they move across no, 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 we go that way and then here we've got a, a sort of a confluence of, of streets, just a couple of streets. Um, one coming across this way, uh, one heading in that direction, and then another one. We've got a we've got a meeting point over here, and another street ca carries on in this direction. Try and then they're all over there, but and behind the scenes. But this is a point where you can actually discern where these streets meet up anyway um i'm just establishing a step establishing let me just do this i want to there's a it's kind of a horizon line of sorts i guess it, uh, at least uh, a vanishing point over there somewhere not important um, because these houses are all higgledy piggledy there's no there's no uh, well, homesteads I should say not houses um, they're constructed in a very higgledy piggledy fashion with no uh, <laughs> there's no plans there's no building rights they just build wherever they can they, they brought in the materials and they just build wherever there's a space um, fitting between other other places and so on and so forth. So, and as we start to reach towards the horizon line so that so this perspective angle becomes flatter and flatter and flatter. Anyway by and large we just got a nice So all this is housing, all this is housing, I say, uh, shacks. And I'm going to be depicting those quite loosely and then, and then just building onto them as I go. Just a jumble of shapes, that's all. Um, with a couple of windows dotted around here and there. As I said, we're not looking for anything really that specific. So they would, would build these places with it, mostly with if they can find sheet metal, um, corrugated iron, whatever anything that they could find and they construct these places. Many of them have got tires on the roofs, obviously to keep them from the, to keep them, the, the roofs from blowing off in the wind and the, 
when the Cape Doctor starts to starts to huff and puff. Cape Doctor is the, the prevailing wind that, that sweeps across the, uh, the Cape Flats um, in from False Bay and what have you. And it can get quite quite strong. <laughs> in fact, it's called the Cape Doctor because it it's, it's said to blow away all the ills of, you know, of the Cape Flats, all the sickness and the because you can imagine, there's no, there's a very limited um, sewage system infrastructure here in places like this. There's there's very little in the way of uh, sanitization. There's very little in the way of of uh, proper water supply. It's a slum, and the slum, and there's no there's no uh, um, dedicated garbage sites and landfills or anything like that anywhere anywhere close by so they just basically use whatever little space and you know, even between their homes and what have you wherever as their garbage disposal there's no um, as I said there's no sewerage uh, systems all that so you can imagine the toxins in the air, um, the nasties that exist here. Uh, and the Cape Doctor kind of cleanses the land, wash, washes everything away. And that's what's been said over the years. I don't, I must actually find out when that, that, uh, term was coined so this might take a little while to start to build properly to start to take proper shape and whatever you say. Let's just be, try and be patient with it and of course there's a cross grid as well. funny little through streets and other things bisecting interconnecting it's really ramshackle at best somehow they've managed to to to, to retain a, a semblance of of very rough street street patterns um, some of these streets might have been tired at a point um, but yeah, they just also covered in sand most of the time. And there are vehicles that come in here, of course. People bring have their cars and they and they bring them in, so they do have to be able to have access. So that's how these some of these little streets have formed. So this is quite different from the other, from our most recent, more recent pieces of seascapes and and what have you, um, where they are quite simple in terms of their, in terms of their, you can see exactly what they are. Hopefully you can see exactly what this is without too much of an effort once we're getting closer to completion. 
Um, so, yeah, I think for some time now I've I've wanted to, in fact, for years now I've wanted to depict a township. So I always am fascinated when I when I driving past or even going to some of these townships that been to places like Komashu in 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 surrounding Durban, been into Umlazi, which is one of the bigger which is the one of the large two of the large ones. Um um quite a is another one I think and oh, been I've been to quite a few. And and the the slum sections there's there's another one fairly close Cato um Cato Manor um so these informal settlements and the, it, what always is, it, it fascinates me is is the the number of um, they put they do put in some rudimentary electricity lines and so on um, but also people then steal electricity of course and uh, you say so you have these these long tendrils of, of 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 lines cables extending off the official ones um, but the amount of um, satellite dishes for television in these places astound me <laughs> everyone's got a TV um, so you see that it's it's quite. Well, I might not even get to depict it properly in, in in this in this piece. Actually, I will. But but um, but uh, it's quite sort of. It's like stuff that doesn't doesn't quite make sense, but does in the way. So you'll find these these very rickety shacks. Rusted metal, some painted, some not, some, you know, patched up. As I said, tires on the roof. Um, but then you've got these little little white satellite dishes for, <laughs> for picking up TV, television. Um, yeah. And that's kind of been, that's kind of a, a norm now with all of all of the townships and settlements in South Africa, the slum areas. Yeah, so not really that much different to any other slum anywhere else in the world, anywhere else in the world. Um, it's. Uh, in that respect, I would imagine that, uh, where is it, in Mexico, city of Mexico, it's, there's large, large and extensive slums in that area. We saw that, we saw that in Fast and the Furious, was it six or five? <laughs> um, where it just, it's endless, 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 endless. Um, slum areas, slum lands. And and yet again, which also fascinates me, there's a certain pride almost to every no not almost, there is a certain pride to to every single dwelling. Um, people have done have gone to great lengths to make their very humble homes presentable livable and that some will have used uh, um, packaging um, boxes um, maybe posters and things like that on on the on the walls inside so you get these wonderful sort of arrays of patterns and all sorts of things and they've, they've 
they keep them tidy and clean and what they have to and it's just it's just the, the fact that there's that infrastructure is so badly lacking that they that it becomes kind of starts to get unhygienic and what have you so uh, I think that they also so they I think what the what the government what little the government does but what they do do is uh, is bring in these um, so obviously there's no there's no plumbing in these places there's no toilets there's no you know so they bring in these portable toilets and they have these long rows of of portaloos um, and yeah so um, all around the place and the, and those kind of things and they might they might put in a central spot where pe where there's plumbed water um, and then people will have to take their containers and whatever you and go and collect fill up with water it's become the way of life um, so this I'm going to be Hopefully depicting it and again at this point I've, I've let go of this piece because I've already established my I've already established my backdrop of the of the mountains false bay and I've 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 got the the the, the, the main street pack street uh, design in place and and now it's, I'm just letting go. It, it will form as it's meant to. I don't know how it's meant to, but it will. And is, is this the time already? I've only got 15 minutes left. Goodness me. Right, anyway. Um, so now, from now on out, it's just let's see what happens let's see what happens i have this idea of as i said this softness to it of sorts um also kind of depicting the the sort of haziness over this area and it's just this this mass of of the the mass of homes that sort of just become a blurry indistinct jumble <clears throat> and with there's and, and as I said that some of them have taken many of them most of them have taken actually have actually taken pride in their in their in their homes um, and um, some of them have built rudimentary walls um, out of uh, you know those concrete blocks and what have you whatever they whatever they've managed to do and they some of them have managed to sort of plaster the one facade of their so sometimes they've got You've got different colours, just like what you have in in, uh, in the uh, the Boakar, the, the the pieces that I did. When was it? Was it last year? Was it this year? Um, I've got a feeling it was in December. I'm forgetting now. It's just a complete blur for me. Um, yeah. So with the Boakar, they then painted their homes in this these wonderful vibrant colours. And I suppose there's a, there's a kind of a synergy here because those those homes in the Boer Cop um, were were originally built by the Dutch um, to to as homesteads for the slaves, and once. Um, emancipation came along and slavery was abolished and and now these people could own their own homes um, they were free no longer slaves and to celebrate emancipation they painted these drab white as they were as they were originally painted they they painted them these wonderful, festive, bright colours, all different 
pinks, greens, yellows, wonderful colors um, to celebrate freedom, I guess. Um, and they've done the same here. <laughs> It's kind of a different kind of thing, I guess, and, and it's just a, maybe there's a different mindset, but it wasn't really about freedom, although although many of them, they would have just used whatever whatever they, they could get their hands on. Um, but there is a sense of joy and gaiety, even amongst all of this, this squalor. So I'm just I'm just working with a collection of geometric shapes, somewhat geometric shapes, to establish these this mass of homes, and it's and it's really maybe it's just a nod to freedom of expression of sorts. Um, creativity often comes with a price I find you know definitely as an as an artist <laughs> I think many artists throughout history have also found the same kind of thing really where it's not it's not for money it's it's uh, and, and it's sometimes very difficult to make money um, out of out of art out of creativity and what have you but expression i'm not I'm talking general about expression self-expression and individuality you know these homes are you know there's some wonderful bright colors and so on used here and i'll and i'll and i'll i'll try to to get a smattering of that and and so this piece is about expressiveness some of these um and and it's 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 outside of the, the, the defines of the structured areas of Kailicha or any other place, suburbia, um, where there's these grid lines of roads and nice neat houses built and whatever. This is a complete hodgepodge. And that's what I want to try to, to establish. I imagine this will definitely take me all five days this week. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And you got five minutes left today. Hopefully once I've, I've got these, these shapes established and so on there. It will start to go a little bit quicker. Yeah, so even within the, the as I say, this the, the, the squalor and confines of a place like this, this windswept, sandy streets, there's no vegetation here. Ah, oh, there is some over there, but you can't build on that because that's a, that's a sand dune. It's just covered in some, some kind of um, very hardy vegetation. 
called Fangbos, um, that is endemic to the to this part of the Cape. Um, so this these these dunes are shifting continuously, or the, at least parts of them are. So you can't that you, you can't build on sand like that. It's too soft, um, even for these kind of structures. So there's no in, in the in the flat areas there's no vegetation, not a yeah, it might be a couple of little scrubby bits of raggedy grass and funny things, but by and large it's it's barren of vegetation. But and yet this wonderful vibrancy of of colour emerges as people establish their homes and their individuality. There's a sense of pride in that, and I, I love that because it's, yeah, um, these people have no money. They have very little, and the, and what what they can eke out, and they bring to their homes, and and maybe maybe uh, find some sheets of. PVC or um, boarding or something, maybe masonite or I don't know, whatever, somewhere along the way, and they bring it home and they put a patch up or make extensions or something like that. I don't know, but uh, yeah, there's a there's there's it's kind of a in a way epitomizes the colourfulness of this country and yes yeah, some of these some of these uh, informal housing settlements in especially in KwaZulu Natal around Durban have sprouted new a new kind of landscape a shiny um, <laughs> new big 72 inch flat screen TVs and LG Samsung fridges and you name it due to the recent looting but uh, as I'm working here I'm kind of almost understanding how that happens even though it's different in the Cape um, it was attempted. They were there trying to get things going, but I don't think, by and large, it was achievable. I'm going to stop for now. Um, I think I have my I have my composition in place, um, and then you know, there's so there's this there's this seething mass of of uh, of. Uh, these informal homes over here in the foreground there's this sort of sort of raggedy scraggly hill over here and then in the distance there's these beautiful beautiful mountains um of the hottentots holland um kind of contrasting all of this and then this and then this pale sky above so i think we're on a good a good wicket I'm happy. Um, it's I always like change. I, you know, so yeah. We'll be we'll come back to seascapes and what have you later this week. Tomorrow we're going to uh, Nikki's coming to fetch me. We're going to uh, we're going to go to Salt Rock and we're going to get some images. Another how I've been I've been I've been needing some more imagery badly. Um, so I'm um, fresh look. Um, um, my style has developed. Um, so uh, I'm going to be going with, with kind of with new eyes um, and there's a lovely tidal pool at Salt Rock so we can visit that and get some nice images that I can I can then offer you people <laughs> so anyway right that's it for today um, do tune in again tomorrow to the tube um, and uh, for those of you who are new thank you for joining thank you for subscribing to my channel and uh, yes catch you again tomorrow so oodles and oodles and 
oodles of toodles. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so be good, be safe, be kind, be, be caring, um, and have a fantastic day further. And see you guys soon. Bye.